So this channel is about to turn a year old or maybe already has. I don't know. It depends on when this goes up. And this is something that I've never done before, but I felt like I probably should. I've never just sat down and explained what this channel is, where it came from, what the purpose behind it is. So I figured I would do that now. Seems like a good time a year in to just kind of evaluate what's going on here. This is something that I know is going to appeal to a very small amount of people. Most people aren't going to care about this at all. So if you are one of those people who care, that's awesome. Thank you. If you're not, skip it. It doesn't, you don't need to watch this. I just wanted to sit down and explain where this channel came from, what my plans for the future are, things I've learned over this past year of uploading YouTube videos. So let's start with where this came from. What is this? How did it get here? I guess the start of this channel really goes back to 2011 when I was in college and I majored in the music business and through that degree, I took several classes on music history. I ended up taking more than I needed to because I just loved the subject so much. So I took extra electives and it became a subject that I was just very passionate about and I loved learning about. So once I got out of college, I started listening to a lot of history podcasts and there were two in particular that I really loved, the British History Podcast and the History of Ancient Rome. And what I loved about them is that they went episodically. So instead of just saying, we'll talk about Julius Caesar now, and then we'll talk about Constantine, and then we'll go back and talk about, they said, we'll focus on the years 100 to 105. In the next episode, it's 105 to 110 or, you know, whatever. It kind of felt like you were in a college classroom going episodically through the story. And I really loved that. So I thought, is there a podcast that teaches music history in that same way. And I couldn't find one. Maybe maybe there was, maybe it existed, but I couldn't find it. And there was a lot of great music history podcasts, but they talked about specific bands or specific genres or bounced around a lot. And I wanted one that just started at the beginning and worked its way through. And I've always kind of had the mentality that if you want something to exist and it doesn't, then make it. So I thought maybe this is the podcast I should make. But then I also felt that I wasn't interesting and engaging enough to host a podcast by myself. I didn't want to just sit with a microphone and tell the story. I didn't think people would care to listen to that. I wanted something to add a little bit of depth to it. So I took inspiration from another podcast I love called The Dollop. With The Dollop, one comedian reads a story from American history to another comedian who has no idea what the topic is and just reacts like they're hearing the story for the first time because they are. So I thought, let's bring on my wife to do this podcast with me. So the premise of the show is that I am trying to teach her music history. And she is someone who does not know really anything about music history. She loves music, but she doesn't care much about music history. She doesn't want to learn it. She doesn't know much about it. So that's kind of the premise of the show is me teaching her. And we go episodically. We started with minstrelsy and as of the time of this recording, we're in hip hop. So we're in the late 80s going into the 90s right now. So we launched that podcast in January of 2020. We're still going. It's very informal now. We kind of do it when we have the time or we feel like it. So we're kind of on like a one episode a month rhythm at this point. But go check it out if you want to listen to it. There's probably well over 100 episodes by this point. And that podcast is also called Sound of History. So that's how this whole like creating content around music history started. And then in 2022, I started watching a lot of history-based YouTubers. And through that, I got introduced to channels like Oversimplified and Extra History, where they would teach history, but use these kind of like super simple animation styles. And I had the dangerous thought that I'm sure a lot of people have where I thought I could do that. Turns out I can't, but we'll get to that. I've always enjoyed YouTube. I started watching YouTube back in like 2008, where I actually had creators that I would follow and watch everything they uploaded. And since then, I've always thought it would be cool to have my own YouTube channel. I've just never had anything that I cared about enough to like actually try and do. But then watching those history channels, I started thinking I have hours of music history audio. Why don't I just take that, do simple animations, turn those into YouTube videos and see what happens. I learned pretty quickly that those simple animations are not simple and I am not good at drawing. So the little drawings that you see in some of my episodes of me and my wife at like a table and stuff, they're meant to look like amateurish and crude. I did that on purpose, but also I couldn't do much better if I tried. I'm not an artist. So what I would do is I would take the audio from those podcast clips, throw those simple animations on top with different footage I found and really abridge it and upload it on YouTube. The YouTube videos are 
you know, less than 20 minutes, most of them. The actual podcast episode, most of them are like 45 minutes to an hour. So I, I end up cutting out quite a bit from those episodes. But then I also realized I didn't just want to do that. I wanted to offer a little bit more. I wanted to talk about bands or artists or genres that didn't really fit into the timeline episodic thing I was doing with the podcast or maybe there were bands from like the 50s that we didn't cover that I wanted to cover so that's why I started uploading videos with just me talking to the camera instead of doing the animation style so that's kind of why there's two drastically different types of videos on this channel and that's something that I've never explained before but feels kind of important so maybe I should have explained that earlier but the videos that are me and my wife with simple little drawings those are from podcasts and some of those episodes are two years old some of them are recent and then there's ones that are just me talking to the camera and all of those are recent so when you suggest an artist for me to cover that's probably going to be this it's probably going to be me talking to the camera it won't be that like dual host thing so when i started this channel i really had two main goals and one of them was to learn how to do it I, as you can tell from my early stuff, I knew nothing about video production. I knew nothing about lighting. I knew nothing about cameras. I knew nothing about anything really. I had literally zero experience with editing any videos before I started this channel. So you see me work through a lot of that in the earlier videos and try and figure out my style, figure out the production elements. And I'm still not good, but I'm definitely a lot better than I was back when I started. So that was one of my main goals when I started this, was just to learn how to do it and get better at it. I love learning new skills, especially creative skills like this. And the second thing that I thought would be really cool if it happened was just creating a community of people who love music history and wanna talk about it and wanna share stories, who wanna talk about their favorite artists, their favorite concerts they went to, and just explain how important that was to them. I thought like, max I could get 10,000 subscribers maybe in five to seven years from now and I thought that would be really cool if I could have 10,000 people who cared about music history and wanted to talk about it with each other so that was kind of the goal as well having this like community who cares about this subject and also getting better at making the videos so what have I learned through my year of making this stuff? I think, at least I hope you can tell that I've learned how to make videos better. I think if you watch my most recent videos, the production quality is way better than the earlier stuff. I think I'm a better editor now. I'm not good, but I'm better. I'm And I'm trying to learn more, get better every video. I think I have like a little Elgato key light now, so I hope that makes the lighting a little bit better. I still need to get a better like microphone and camera, but you know, I don't want to sink more money into this yet. So I hope you can tell that I'm learning that a little bit, and I hope that is getting better for people because it is the focus. I do want that to happen. I think I've also learned that the podcast episode videos aren't translating as well as I want them to. And what I mean by that is what works with a podcast doesn't work as well on YouTube. This channel's never been about views for me. It's never been like, I'm not trying to make it my full-time job. I'm not trying to make it super popular. It's just something I do for fun to learn things, but still it makes sense to try and play with the YouTube algorithm and try and at least have it work for you. So I can't just upload a 45 minute or hour long episode. So I have to cut that down. And what that means is unfortunately, I cut down a lot of the stuff that my wife offers. If you listen to the podcast episodes, you can kind of get a better feel for what she brings. She's super valuable, super important. And I don't want to do this without her. But if you listen to the YouTube videos or watch the YouTube videos, you can kind of be forgiven for thinking she doesn't really bring much because I have to cut out a lot of what she does bring. And that's unfortunate, but it just is the way it is. It has to stay on topic and I have to tell the story of this band I'm talking about and a lot of what she offers is maybe not quite on that topic. So in order to cut the video length down, I have to cut that out and I hate that, but it is kind of how it is. I've also learned that the podcast episodes don't translate all that well because of the audiences. When I research and write a podcast episode, my wife is the intended audience. I am writing a episode that I think she will be engaged with, that I think she'll like. So that means it's very surface level. She's not going to care about the super in-depth history and background of things because she just doesn't really care about music history all that much. So I'm trying to keep it entertaining. I'm trying to keep it surface level for her. But then when that comes to YouTube and people who do really care about this subject, 
watch the video and it's just very surface level, it might be a little bit weird. It might be like, why is, who cares about this? So that's something that I've been wrestling with a little bit and it's made me kind of question whether or not I still want to do the podcast episodes or if I want to focus just more on me on the video. The reason why I keep doing the podcast episodes is because it helps me get content out quicker. One of the things that takes the most amount of time with these videos is the research. It's just spending hours learning about a band, learning about a genre. And with the podcast episodes, that's already done. I've done that research back in 2021, so I don't have to do it again. So doing like the alternating podcast, non-podcast, it really helps me get videos out at a faster rate. So I've still been doing the podcast episodes, but let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on that, if you have any ideas, if you're even still watching this at this point. Another thing I learned pretty quickly making these videos is that people don't really care about me, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I mean, I had like a hundred subscribers, and I posted a video about like five albums that changed the world, and then I realized like, who am I? Why do people care what albums I think changed the world? Like I don't have that kind of audience that cares about my opinion. People are coming to the videos because of the topic, not because of me. So what that meant was I started taking more of myself out of the videos. I started taking my personality out of the videos and focusing instead just on the story. I've always considered myself more of a storyteller than like a historian anyway. And I think a mark of a good storyteller is getting out of the way of the story. Like whenever you hear a good story, you don't really remember the personality of the person who told it to you, you just remember the story. So I thought that if I could step back and just like present the story in an engaging and good way, then I was succeeding. So that is kind of that shift there from like, I just kind of stepped back and took a little bit of myself out of the videos. I also learned pretty quickly that the people who are watching these videos probably know more about the topic than I do, which is an interesting thought. For example, my most popular video is the Devo video. Before I started working on that video, I knew absolutely nothing about Devo. I had heard maybe two songs. I knew there was some sort of philosophical point behind what they were doing, but I didn't know what it was. So I did a lot of research and I made that video. I learned a lot about them in that. But then the people who are searching for and clicking on that video are people who have loved Devo for 30, 40 years who are just going to know more than I do. So there's always that little bit of imposter syndrome every time I upload a video where I'm like, I'm not an expert on this. I, I did some research. I did the best research I could, but I'm not an expert. So trying to like battle that and try to still give people interesting things while recognizing that the people watching it are going to probably know more than I do is just an interesting dichotomy I've worked through. So moving forward in the next year, next couple of years, what do I plan to change? What am I going to do different with this channel? I think I, I hope I'm going to keep getting better at production and things are going to keep improving. I'm hoping to improve some of the equipment I have to hopefully get a little bit better picture quality, sound quality, what have you. I think I want to start putting a little bit more of my personality back into these videos, start just being a little bit more myself instead of taking a step back. So we'll see how that goes. And recently I've started to do a little bit more in depth videos. For example, I did a Buddy Holly video that was like 40 something minutes. I did a Janis Joplin video, which was over 30 minutes. And it really digs deeper into the stories of these musicians. And I loved that. I really loved working on those and learning more about these musicians. They have not done well from a performance standpoint. The Buddy Holly episode that took me probably dozens of hours has like 150 views or something. The YouTube experts would tell you that means I shouldn't do those anymore because the audience isn't there for it, but it's not about views for me. I do what I enjoy and what I want to do. So I'm probably still going to do that. It'll be less frequent because they take way longer. So for example, I was working on like the minor threat and the disco episode and all of that while researching the Janis Joplin episode. So that's still going to happen. So maybe one out of every five or six videos will be a little bit more in depth. So if you like those, great. If not, feel free to skip them. I guess they're just for me anyway. I've already talked about it a little bit, but I might move on from the podcast episodes eventually. We'll see. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm still back and forth on that one. And then just to end this, I just kind of wanted to talk about goals. Like I had my goals when I started this. Have they changed now? What am I 
what am I hoping for out of this channel one year in? And I think at the base level, it hasn't. I still want to learn how to do this. I've learned that I actually really enjoy editing and I want to get better at it. So that's fun to know and fun to work on. I do still think it would be really cool to have a community of people who care about music history and want to talk about it more. Um, I, I still don't think there's more. I, I don't know in terms of like subscriber amount what I'm aiming for. I don't, I'm trying not to pay attention to that. I'm trying to just do what I want to do and see if the people are there to meet me, but we'll see. I think people, when they start channels or do something like this, they have a goal of like, I want to go full time on YouTube. I want to get a million subscribers. And that's never been my goal. I think in my wildest dreams, and this is going to sound maybe a little bit like conceited, like who does he think he is that he's going to do this? I don't think this is going to happen. But if you allowed me to just give my wildest dreams of what I wanted this channel to do. I wanted to open doors for me that I would not be able to open without it. And what that means is I would love to like, for example, go to the rock and roll hall of fame and get to do like a private tour with an expert and film that and bring it to you guys. And just like hear these stories with these artifacts and tell those stories. I would love to potentially interview artists and hear their stories from them I just, I would love to be able to do cool things that I would never have been able to do without this channel. I, like I said, will that ever happen? Probably not, but those are my wildest dreams. That's where I want it to go. Whether that happens while I have 5,000 subscribers or 10 million, that doesn't matter to me. What matters is getting to do that and getting to hear and bring these stories to people. So I'm sorry if that sounded arrogant or conceited or whatever, but that's... If you ask me what my ultimate goal and dream for this channel is, that would be it. So that's just kind of a little bit of a breakdown on where this channel came from, what's happened in the past year, where I hope it goes. And if you stuck it out this far, thank you. Let me know in the comments. That's incredible. Like I said, this won't appeal to hardly anyone. There's very few people who will actually watch this video and that's fine. I just still felt like it needed to, to be here to kind of give a state of the channel and one year in. So let me know your thoughts about any of this in the comment section below. Share this channel with your friends if you think they would be a good addition to this music history loving community. And please keep commenting and sharing the videos. It's been really fun and I'm looking forward to another year of it.